Hi folks, Dr. P here, and I'm going to talk about the eternal triangle of unit creation. That is, that when you create a unit, a military unit, you have to decide how much you want to use to give it attack capability, how much you want to give it defensive capability, and how much mobility you want to give it. And you can have units that focus on one or another of those, but you can never get all three all the way that you might want. Although if you make bigger and bigger units, you can approach it like the Dreadnought in 1906 was much stronger in attack, uh, at least as strong in defense and much more mobile than all the battleships that had come before, the pre-Dreadnought battleships. But then everybody else started to build Dreadnoughts and so we were back to the usual situation. I watched a video recently from Dirk Innefell, uh, who does naval videos and does a really great job. Um, he was talking about modernization of capital ships between World War I and World War II. And there again, the question was, can we improve the firepower of this ship, which wasn't very likely unless you added more guns, perhaps, but there's only so much room for guns. Can we improve the protection? Well, they could add torpedo bulges, uh, they could add anti-aircraft anti -aircraft guns, which is a form of production, but uh, they couldn't really change the armor. Uh, that's much too difficult to do in a modernization. Or can we improve the speed? Well, that's pretty difficult as well, unless you remove one set of engines and put another set in. And of course, in uh, ships, we see such things as the contrast between battleships and battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are not quite as heavily armed as battleships, they are faster, and they have much less protection. You've got to sacrifice one thing to get another thing. Battle cruisers were designed to fight enemy scout cruisers or especially commerce raiding cruisers. And they proved their worth when a couple were sent down to the Falklands and Admiral Graf Spee's uh, German raiders came along with armored cruisers, which were a much lesser uh, unit, and the Battle cruisers wiped them out. That's what they were there for. So in warfare, you have different reasons for assigning different importance to the attack, the defense, and the mobility. And you see that in space war games just as well. You see it in the original Avalon Hill games where they had an attack number, a defense number, and a movement number. And a great many war games still use exactly that same uh, separation of powers, you might say. Now, could this apply to entire armies? Maybe, maybe not. Um, depends on the scale you're talking about. If the armies, there were many armies in the Eastern Front, and there were tank armies, and there were armored infantry armies, and there were infantry armies, and there may have been even uh, artillery armies, although I have my doubts about that. So you could have some differentiation. Um, and armored infantry, by the way, has superior mobility and costs more, because costs always come into this, than regular infantry. So one of the limitations on attack defense mobility is the cost. Range is part of the attack, the firepower. Um, and the reason that we have lots of different sized ships and even lots of different sized tanks in World War II was different solutions to the eternal triangle of unit creation of attack, defense, and mobility. In modern times, the main battle tank is supposed to do all of it, but we still have other solutions in armored personnel carriers, some of which are quite heavily armed. 30 millimeter uh, automatic gun or even a 75 or 100 millimeter gun. Some of them have less armor, some of them have more armor and so forth. And this is the way it always goes. So if you're designing a war game, especially if there are tactical elements where individual units get at each other, then you can consider attack, defense and mobility and what you want to do with it. Thanks for listening.